Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sentiu. This is Nick Mazing from Sentiu's New York City office. Uh, today is Tuesday, July 23rd, 2019, and the purpose of this short video is to show you how our new machine learning based transcript smart summary uh, works. We released it last week. In short, uh, what we did is we trained a ML tool to do what we used to do as analysts. We're mostly former buy sellers on the product management side. And uh, what we do our earnings season is, is read transcripts and highlight and classify these. So uh, here is how it works with a real world example from this morning. I'm going to look at Whirlpool, uh, ticker WHR. For those unfamiliar with the name, uh, Whirlpool is a major manufacturer and marketer of household appliances under the Whirlpool name, Maytag, Amana, KitchenAid, and some other brand names. It's a classic industry uh, tied to housing and, and appliance replacement cycles. Uh, Whirlpool reported yesterday and actually guided up for the year. Uh, the call was at uh, 8 a.m. Eastern this morning and the stock was up after hours, then had another spike pre-market, but it is uh, down around 5% right now. Let me just check very quickly here in our equity data terminal, see what's going on with the name. It's down 5.5%. Uh, so going back to the uh, going back to the uh, uh, our dog search. Uh, so what uh, Whirlpool did is uh, when they released their earnings, uh, they did guide up for the full year, and it is very clear to see when we actually uh, apply the uh, our redlining. I will go here in the earnings 8K, uh, and when I go to redlining, I'm going to go to all changes. I'm going to compare against prop prior quarters and um, what, what they really care about is obviously a lot of changes you know that that happen but what really matters here is the um, is the outlook you can see that the uh, earnings per share were increased and uh, you know there was a um, gain of sale from for this business and there is you know some puts and takes around you know, uh, Brazil, Turkey for the full year, you can see the, the free cash, the cash flow and the free cash flow guidance actually went down. Now, um, going back to the, uh, um, going back to the uh, uh, transcript, uh, we can just jump right in here and uh, you still have the same transcript as before, right? Which, which you can read, you're very familiar with this format. By clicking on the uh, smart summary icon here, we bring in the classification. So what the tool does is it slices and dices the transcript, so to speak, on nine broad classifications, guidance for looking statements, financials and KPIs, products, markets, and, and uh, business and markets, corporate actions, legal, regulatory, and deflection, uh, which is a kind of a subjectivity matter. Um, there is also an additional NOP layer, uh, which is positive and negative statements. And these uh, classifications are not mutually exclusive. So in other words, a certain uh, uh, sentence can be either uh, both a guidance, and, uh, guidance sentence and a KPI sentence. Um, there is another layer, which is key terms, which is uh, essentially algorithmically surfaced um, uh, key terms from the trend. So for example, back half was something that is uh, uh, very interesting. There is actually, it's actually mentioned nine times. Now this is uh, July already, and obviously analysts want to know what's going on in the uh, in the uh, uh, in the back half of the year. So we we'll go back to classifications. Uh, there is another uh, layer to that. Uh, this uh, this can be read chronologically, either navigating through here or by opening here and just reading the highlights. There is another layer in the uh, uh, in this whole thing, which is the table view. And the table view really, uh, what it does is it extracts individual sentences, which you can always view in context right here. Um, and it ranks them based on a number of factors, subjectivity, deflection, legal, and so on, similar to the classifications here. And then there is the central guidance score, which is a, uh, it's, it's a, basically a regression score, which uh, 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 also penalizes for subjectivity. So uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. There is a similar view, table view in key terms. So what it does is uh, something that, you know, previously was extremely labor intensive. You can actually see whether uh, these key terms are increased or decreased and who is talking about the management versus analysis. For example, you can see EMEA uh, went up quite a bit. Back half, obviously, it went up because we're uh, at that point. But you can see the EMEA business is is definitely a uh, something that is uh, that is being being spoken about quite a bit. You can see cost inflation. Is, is new versus versus Q1, and you can analyze this very quick. Now, these are all click through, and they'll take you to the uh, transcript uh, to a transcript search for uh, WHR with these terms highlighted. 
So now uh, let's go back and we'll just take a quick look here at, um, let's say, some of the guidance scores. You can see that uh, we have confidence that will deliver the full year guidance significantly above what was previously guided. Uh, scrolling down, uh, we raised our ongoing EBIT margin guidance. Uh, lastly, we're increasing our own, uh, ongoing earnings per share, which is the non-GAAP number. Uh, we're expecting 175 mix uh, improvement uh, related in, in the EBIT margin. Uh, this sentence is, uh, it's actually, they're getting their costs down, even though there's a lot of negativity in that. So I actually uh, voted that down through our feedback uh, menu earlier today when I was, when I was reviewing the transcripts. Um, I'm going to close the guidance. Uh, classifications here just by clicking on that. Let's say I want to look at uh, forward-looking statements. Uh, you can see, for example, uh, the the vestiger that got delayed. Uh, they will be paying down their term loan. It's a it's a billion dollar term loan. It's a, it's a big number for them because as as you can see, their you know their revenue, their quarterly revenue is is about. Uh, let me see here, quarterly revenues are running at you know four to five billion, and in terms of gross profit, you know you can see they're they're a sub billion dollar gross profit business and have been for 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 quite a bit on a quarterly basis so back to the uh, uh back to the transcripts here um you can see the uh uh there is two additional amounts of operations so basically you know all of the gap guidance is really the uh, the revenue guidance that looked really good is actually the uh, delayed divestitures which is probably partially why why the stock is actually down once once uh you're able to analyze that um Looking at uh, deflection, which I think is one of the more interesting uh, um, topics to look at, you can see that you know uh, this is a positive statement, but you can see there is a lot of uh, gives us confidence, which uh, uh, you know we've looked at a lot of research on that, and uh, management team saying we're confident is sometimes is actually not a good sign. Uh, you can see that there is a um, uh, despite the volatility, we have momentum, we feel confident. Um, you can see progress made. Uh, over here, you can see again confidence, and again it's very confident, and again we are confident, and again we are confident. So you can see that these are these are positive terms, but they are really indicative of of uh, possible deflection. And you can see, uh, you know, positive again. This is again based on uh, um, uh, based on a lot of the. Uh, uh, this is regardless of this classification. Again, it applies to it's an NLP-based uh, uh, filter, and you can see obviously we achieved record second quarter ongoing earnings per share and margin expansion. These are all good things. So obviously it's green. Uh, North America uh, solid top line growth uh, with additional EBIT margin expansion and stroke price mix and cost discipline, more at offset cost inflation. So these are all good news. Uh, so you can also obviously see things that are. Uh, in red, because obviously you can see, uh, uh, for example, we had a uh, uh, there was an impact on free cash flow because they had a settlement payment for the French Competition Authority. Again, relevant information. It's negative because obviously there's a ca cash usage. Uh, looking at the key terms, I'm not going to spend a lot of time there. I will just click on back half, so you can see basically what is having is the back half is uh, you know they're discussing here the margin in the back half. Uh, guide for the back half. Uh, you can see EMEA. Uh, we expect EMEA margins to begin to improve significantly through the back half of the year, which tells you that Q1 and Q2 they were not that great. Uh, but you know, good news is they expect that they expect improvement. Uh, you can see here. Um, this is actually a positive uh, uh, statement. It's not as big of a headwind as before. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to classifications and jump into the table view. Very quickly, I'm going to sort by central guidance score, and you can see, uh, you know, really a lot of positive statements are on top. Uh, still expect to get uh, working capital improvements, increasing operating guidance per share, saw improvement in demand environment, providing us confidence, uh, solid 50, point, uh, 50 basis points of margin improvement year over year. You can see these are all good news, and and you know we can we can write about this. We can obviously guide things such as you know let's say on uh, subjectivity. Let's see what is interesting, what two scores high in subjectivity. Uh, regulatory change, we feel very confident. Uh, price mix, we can play the sale. Uh, you see these are, you know, you can see the positives are still in green. Um, soft market environment in Canada, which was, there was another comment about Canada that spotted earlier. Uh, we can, if we go to the key terms and we click here on table view, 
what is interesting is let's say uh, let's say back half. If I click here, what it will do is it will essentially open up a new tab in the uh, in the browser, and you can see there were 13 hits up from two hits uh, in in the investor than one hit previously. You can see the it, it is recurring. There were nine hits last year, so let me go here, and you can see uh, you can actually get the context here right away. Uh, what's going on in in the back half of the year? So um, I'm going to go back into the uh, main tab that I that I had open here. Uh, this is what the Sentinel uh, Smart uh, Summary looks like for transcripts. We released it just in time for earnings season. So whether you have listened to the calls, uh, it can help you not miss anything. Or if this is a name where, the, where you usually read the transcript, but you're not on the calls because it is something that you track, but you don't have a position in, uh, definitely uh, run the ML2 on top of that, see what you can extract. You can really uh, find the uh, important information in seconds uh, rather than spending you know, hours and hours reading all the transcripts. Uh, with that, uh, please do get in touch. Uh, you can use our website or you can call us. And uh, we can, uh, you know, based on, based on your needs, this is a standard feature of the product. Uh, we can we can discuss your your current needs, what you're currently using. Uh, it is definitely something that you need to uh, you need to check out. Thank you again, and have a good day.